This bar of gold came from the trash. In fact, the materials inside the electronics thrown out every year are worth an estimated $60 billion. There's palladium, there's tantalum, there's tin, there's lead, there's steel. To extract the most precious metals, you usually need brute force or a powerful acid bath. In many places, the scavengers who process e-waste can't afford proper safety measures. So now, a growing number of solo recyclers are proving they can make money by safely handling it in their own garages. We could potentially recycle all of our e-waste domestically instead of exporting it overseas. Wade Cauley is a dumpster diver on a mission to keep electronics out of landfills. His work led him to partner with a startup that grinds the circuit boards he collects and recovers metals from them using a secret brew that comes from nature. Some of it's microbial, some of it's fungal. So how much money do solo scrappers really make? And can they change the way the global e-waste trade works? We went to Sydney, Australia to find out. Everyone knows when Wade Cauley is coming through town. Family nicknames it Flash because it's red and it's electric and it buzzes around everywhere. Today, he's on his way to a local repair shop that puts aside devices it can't fix. They didn't really have a way of recycling things and they really wanted to. Over the past decade, electronic waste around the world has grown by at least 60%. As of 2019, it's over 50 million metric tons of trash every year. Wade works alone, breaking down tech with drills, screwdrivers, and... These are actually electric garden pruners, but I have repurposed them to be able to cut through a uh, cable. Doing this work comes with risks, but Wade takes precautions. Uh, so I have to put my respirator on to take these fluorescent tubes out because if they break, they contain mercury inside of them, which is obviously poisonous. After a few minutes of work, he finally uncovers the treasure he's after. So this is the uh, main circuit board and this is where all the gold and silver uh, is in all the little uh, black chips. Wade works to ensure that every part of a device is properly handled, even the hard to recycle plastic. Recovering the copper, gold, and palladium inside circuit boards is possible at massive recycling facilities, but it's expensive and requires corporations and consumers to properly dispose of their devices. Today, only about 9% of e-waste in Australia is formally collected. The U.S. is only slightly better at 15%. So unwanted tech piles up on the curb waiting for treasure hunters to find it. All right, there's another nice board. I envision that small recyclers and scrappers are going to continue to grow as a force both within the United States and a lot of other developed countries. Ernie Pietrich is a retired Navy captain who started scrapping in 2019. His YouTube channel, Shark Scrapper, is one of hundreds teaching people about this business. Every minute that you spend scrapping stuff down is eating away into your margin. And sometimes you might only make uh, you know, a couple bucks an hour on something. If you're just doing this as a one person operation out of the back of your truck, you'd be better off to just go work at McDonald's. Scrapping doesn't really pay off until you can invest in heavy duty equipment that can cost tens of thousands of dollars. When you put it on one of our shaker tables, the metals go one way and the waste goes another way. Jason Gaber comes from the world of underground mining, but now he sells crushers that can be used for e-waste. E-waste is gonna be the richest ore of the future. For many, e-scrapping remains a side hustle, but for some of the world's poorest people, it's the only way to make a living. Every year, Rich countries ship thousands of tons of e-waste to places like Delhi, India, a world capital of unregulated e-waste recycling. In this work, there is a little risk in this work, but you have to do it in 
Gulzar was 14 when we talked to him in 2023. He's one of about 50,000 people who scavenge here, mostly from piles imported from countries like the United States and China. Gulzar starts his morning selling breakfast at his father's food cart. After school, he heads to trash piles like this one to sort through old cell phones, computers, and video game controllers. Few people doing this work have access to gloves or other safety equipment. As a cold dentist, को तो ये लग जाता है और ये पत्ता जो है इसका ये सब लग जाता है हाथों में कभी गदार. And to get at the valuable metals, many scavengers burn e-waste. That's a problem that experts say has long-lasting impacts on human health, including stunted growth, miscarriages, organ damage, and bone density loss. In 2021, India recycled a third of the 1.5 million metric tons of e-waste it produced, a recycling rate about twice that of North America. But only a fraction of Indian waste was handled by authorized recyclers. Not to mention, the country imports an estimated 50,000 metric tons of e-waste each year. With his business, Rekindle Me, Wade's trying to prevent e-waste from getting shipped overseas. It would have a really good impact globally if instead of exporting it overseas and putting it on the less fortunate, being able to take care of our own waste. Today, Wade's dropping off a truckload of materials he's collected at Mint Innovation a local startup that grinds circuit boards. Hey Wade, how's it going? Hello, good. Thanks for coming past. No Looks worries. like a, a nice couple of batches here you've brought past. Mint pays him about $3.50 per kilo. So today, he made about $3,500. How much did you bring along today, Wade? Uh, one ton altogether. Typically we're gonna get something like, I don't know, um, 250, 300 kilos of copper could be in there, and maybe you know anything from 100 to 200 grams of gold. We'll see where we get to with that. Um, but I've got a, a wee sample here of gold from yeah, right. uh, the processor. I'll give it to you now yeah. as a down payment. <laughs> maybe you have to give it back. That's that. Uh... Mint runs electronic waste through a liquid bath of bacteria, fungi, and other organic materials. Business Insider first visited Mint's pilot facility in New Zealand in 2021. Now, the company scaled up with a facility here in Sydney, Australia, that's nearly five times bigger. So this is our first plant, uh, and what we are gearing up is being able to build these in multiple cities around the world. It's almost entirely automated, preventing workers from coming into direct contact with hazardous materials. The circuit boards heading up the two-story conveyor belt contain about 70% plastics and 30% metals like copper, silver, palladium, and gold. This machine crushes them into smaller particles, which will then be dissolved in liquid. We've got a big plastic tank behind me here. Uh, it's 25,000 liters. It'll sit in this mixing tank for a few hours. After that, it'll be sent over to one of the filter presses. This blue fluid contains a high concentration of copper, tin, and other less valuable metals. Mint uses electricity to pull out the copper. We simply put that through a series of plates, pass it over that, that have electric current flowing through them, and that plates out the copper from solution. Now, the solution is ready to extract the gold. That's where Mint's special sauce comes in. Mint's team identified these tiny helpers in 2017 through a series of research trips to places like abandoned mines or fields with rusty equipment. They collected species of bacteria and fungi that evolved to bond with specific metals. So you can see this residual dark purple color that's left over biomass that's got the gold stuck to it and it's formed these beautiful purple nanoparticles. The purple cake will go to an off-site refiner to be turned into something easier to recognize. So this gold bar that I'm holding in my hands is about 1.2, 1.3 kilos, uh, and that's the amount of gold that this facility is recovering each day as an operation. At today's prices, that's nearly $85,000 worth of gold. 
The company says its Sydney plant could recover more than $30 million of gold every year. Mint also says its process has a smaller environmental footprint compared to other forms of industrial recycling. What we've created is a closed loop system where what actually leaves the plant is benign uh, and, and not a, a, a chemical waste stream. That's what helped convince Wade to process his treasures here. It feels amazing to see that my circuit boards have finally made it to the right place and I know they're being recycled properly and it's really cool to see it all in place now. Wade started collecting old electronics when he was just a teen. He'd store them in his mom's garage. And I'd, I'd constantly say to Wade, do you, do you think there's a way of, you know, condensing this a little bit just so that we can walk, get out the front door? This is a 1960s uh, TV made in Australia. This was my first old laptop or piece of technology that kind of started my obsession with just anything vintage and electrical and stuff like that. Yeah, I just like to tinker on them and um, see if I can get them working again. I think it's important as a historical standpoint to keep things like this because there's getting less and less by the day of these older systems and yeah, they're actually worth far more than the gold and silver inside of them in my opinion. But Wade may want to consider mining some of his own collection. Ever heard they don't build them like they used to? Well, it's true. Starting in the late 90s, many companies began using gold-plated wiring instead of solid gold to lower costs. For example, integrated circuits from a 1982 IBM PC now sell for about $180 a pound. An Apple CPU, something you'd find inside a neon iMac from 20 years later, only fetches about $4 a pound. Most of the computer uh, hardware is not that valuable. Um, there is, of course, going to be some gold, some copper, some platinum, some palladium, but minute amounts. Environmental activist Jim Puckett started the Basel Action Network, or BAN, in 1997 to monitor and stop illegal exporting of hazardous trash like e-waste. We need to think of handling our waste as a service to society because we don't want to be trashed with waste. We don't want pollution. Wade says his business will continue to earn a modest income until he can invest in new equipment. But doing the right thing is what keeps him going. It motivates me in knowing that it's actually going to be recycled and not going to landfill. And then my hobby kind of feeds into that because, you know, I'm, when I get old stuff, I quite enjoy that. So it's, yeah, it's a really good feeling job for me.